In photography, we have the exposure triangle, which I'm sure many of you may be familiar with. In the exposure triangle, there are three components, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And in this video, I specifically want to talk about aperture, as personally for me, out of all those three, aperture is the most important aspect that I need to control since it gives me the most creative control over my photos in terms of deciding what's in focus and what's not. Of course, with shutter speed, you can affect motion in your shots, such as dragging your shutter and really showing the motion around you. But with aperture, you can control so many aspects in your photos, depth of field, what context you give in your photos, what parts of the image you want to give less attention to, and so on. Of course, all these three components in the exposure triangle have to come together and make sense to essentially get the exposure you're going for. Whether you want underexposed photos, overexposed photos, Photos, or having a balanced exposure for your photo. But the reason why I decided to make this video was because of the thought that I've seen some people have when they decide to buy a fast lens, aka f2.8 or f1.8. The thought of, oh, I have a fast lens. I'm just gonna open my lens all the way up all the time because I paid all this money for a fast lens. And then all their photos are shot at f1.8 or you know whatever the highest aperture value is on their lens, even during the day with the sun fully out. And I don't want to necessarily come off as hating the idea because you know it's their photography and they're free to do whatever they want and shoot however they like. But to me, I don't think it's a very good idea to shoot wide open all the time, unless you have a good reason to. If you need the light because you're doing street photography at night to keep your shutter speed high enough, then yeah, that's a good enough reason to shoot wide open for the entire shoot, to let enough light in to prevent motion blur. But if you're walking around town midday with the sun out, you definitely have enough light. If there's no particular reason you have for shooting wide open, then there's no need to shoot at f1.4 especially if that means losing context in your photo. I'll go through some examples of how I use aperture to get what I want in my photos. So in this photo right here, I want to have a wider depth of field so more things in the photo will be in focus. So that way you can have more context to where this photo was taken at, for example, what the signs say, or even how the people walking in the photo look like. So for this photo, I actually didn't focus on the people. I actually focused on the signs instead. For me, I like capturing the environment people are walking in with people being a filler in the image. Personally for me, I love looking and capturing images like this. I feel like I can really immerse myself in that particular location when seeing such an image. Though with this photo, because the details of the people were also important to me, I wanted you to still notice them and not just blur them out completely. I thought my after down to F8 or you know, just basically stopped down. I didn't pick F8 on purpose, I just picked something stopped down from, you know, like F3.2 or something like that. So that way you can still see the details of the people. If you look from far away, so basically, you know, from an average distance that you would be viewing a photo, you don't really notice them being slightly out of focus. But once you zoom in, you can see a distinction between them and where I focused at. But you know, that was good enough for me since no one views pictures like that, you know, 200% zoomed in. So I was all cool with it. So with this next photo right here, I mainly wanted to have my aperture closer to wide open because I wanted to create more depth in the image. I try to make the depth of field more emphasized by using some foreground, aka these objects right here on the side, which also helped frame my subjects as well. Frame them right in the middle of you know those two uh, objects. I was at a far away enough distance to where I didn't really have to worry about the store behind my subject being out of focus. Just as your aperture is important to deciding depth of field in your photo, your focus distance, aka the distance between you and your subject you're focusing on, also plays a part in your depth of field. So using this photo as an example of that, I was close to my foreground right here shooting at f5 with my subjects further out from me. So because of this, I was able to blur out the foreground to a certain extent, creating this depth with my subject being in the background right here. Looking back at this photo, I probably could have opened my lens up a bit more to create more of that effect without throwing the restaurant my subject was sitting in front of out of focus. But I still really like this photo, so I'll just keep that for you know a mental note for future references. With this photo, I had my aperture set at f14 to really try and get everything in the photo in focus. I was shooting with my 16 to 35 GM at 16 millimeters at the time. Like I mentioned before, there are other things besides aperture that affect depth of field, and focal lengths affect it as well. Wider lenses have greater depth of field than tighter lenses. If you want to test out for yourself, try shooting something from the same distance with the same aperture, using something wide like 24 millimeters and something more telephoto like 85 millimeters. And notice how noticeably different your depth of field is. Anyways, back to this photo. So with the help of both the 16 millimeter focal length as well as my aperture being set to f14, I was essentially able to get the vast majority of things in this picture in focus. From the staircase right here in front of me, to the boat in the mid-ground right here, to the buildings all the way in the back over there. All I had to do was decide where to set my focus point to ensure my depth of field was great enough to have everything behind and in front of my focus point in focus. Basically with Aperture, we have the power to control what elements in our composition are going to be in focus, what context we provide to our viewers, and what we intentionally omit from the frame, aka blur out. It's one of the many tools we have to affect the end result of our photos. And because it's one of our many creative tools, it's important to recognize that the indiscriminate use of wide open apertures isn't always the best approach. While shooting wide open can be a great choice in low light situations, or when you want to separate your subject from everything else, it's not a one size fits all solution. 
The key lies using and controlling your aperture deliberately, considering the specific creative goals of each picture. One important aspect in our photography is about communicating what you want to express and show. An aperture is a versatile, versatile tool that helps us weave compelling narratives through our images. So next time you pick up your camera, remember the power of aperture and use it thoughtfully to bring your vision to life in your photos. Well anyways, that wraps up today's video. I hope you found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form. If you have thoughts or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Later.